Yuta Okotsu is absolutely stacked. Yuta is a freaking real one, and he is one of the strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. He's one of the few characters in the series that has a presence that demands acknowledgement, and he is just too damn strong. Now today, it's going to be a bit more of a chill, a more lax video. I wanted to discuss my own thoughts on the insanity that is Yuta Okotsu and give my take on the state of his power and the apparent downplay that comes with Yuta and the overhype and the straight up cap about him in the community. And I really wanted to give my piece on how I view Yuta and his hype now that we've seen more from Yuta and now that we've reached a higher level of standards in the Cullen games. I really only generally want to say my opinion and express how I feel about what he represents and how he stacks up with characters in the series. Yuta is incredibly fun to talk about as you'll see and I really like him and his power a lot. But let's get into the video. The first thing I want to discuss is Yuta's ability as a fighter and Yuta is the full freaking package as a sorcerer. Cursed energy, cursed tools, cursed techniques, reverse curse, even barrier techniques like domains. Hell, even Black Flash if Mappa's rendition is canon. As far as abilities go, Yuta is not lacking in anything and is fully stacked out. What's incredibly scary about Yuta is that he nearly has every skill a Jujutsu Sorcerer has displayed in the series. We're talking high level reverse curse, cursed energy manipulation, cursed energy reinforcement, Shikigami usage, domain expansions. I mean, how OD does Gege even want to make this kid? When you really step back and think about Yuta and Rika and their power together, it is astonishing. The manga even portrays Yuta as having immeasurable or boundless cursed energy that he can use. And he uses it well. He strengthens his body with his attacks and hits extremely hard using cursed energy while at the same time using it to reinforce and defend himself. He virtually can spam reverse curse technique to a degree because he just has such absurd levels of cursed energy and his reverse curse usage is at such an advanced level where it could easily repair extreme injuries like missing limbs and even heal foreign substances like poison, which is very difficult even for top tier shamans. Yuta is even able to output positive cursed energy to heal others or destroy cursed spirits, which only three people in JJK have been shown using this reverse curse to this degree to be able to output it. Possibly he's even a sorcerer that has such precise control over cursed energy that he probably is even a black flash user which takes him a cut above others in terms of his understanding over cursed energy. And you know, a whole black flash by Yuta, who already hits like a freaking truck on his own, would be devastating. And all of this is on top of the vengeful curse Rika. But before getting too deep, I want to kind of discuss and address the bit of controversy folks might have about Yuta and Rika as different entities. And it doesn't really happen often, but occasionally fans may say that Yuta seems dull or that he is being carried by Rika, which is an incredibly based opinion because now it makes it seem like Yuta never earned his power. But in a way, it is true that Yuta is heavily, heavily dependent on Rika. Like it or not, canonically, Rika is the reason Yuta is a designated special grade sorcerer. If you remember in the fan book, he lost that rank after JJK Zero and Rika Orimoto was exercised in that event, and he was dropped all the way down to a grade four sorcerer in that black uniform. Crazy, right? But he did eventually get his special grade status back in three months time, which I personally assume to be because of his new Rika manifestation. It's really more like Yuta is using Rika as a way to channel his power because the sole reason Rika exists in this form is because Yuta cursed him and Yuta used his cursed energy to bind her soul and Rika Orimoto herself has a longing to stay and protect Yuta. So it is very different from the situation if you think about Yuji and how Sukuna and Yuji are, but Yuta, that's his power. That Yuta and Rika, that they're together. They're literally a package deal. And the only way you're separating them is to kill 
Yuta. They are bound together. With Rika fully manifested, Yuta can harness copious amounts of cursed energy within himself and actually output and fire it and use Rika to mimic cursed techniques. But this is really insane, especially in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero when Yuta used Rika to fight Ghetto Suguru in that peak battle. And it seems like in a very weird way, Yuta possibly did not have his five, limit five minute time limit back when fighting Ghetto Suguru. That fight seemed to have dragged on a bit and lasted longer. Yuta even managed to defeat Ghetto in combat. Later in the story though, Kenjaku said Ghetto would have actually won if his curses were not split between those forces in Kyoto and Jujutsu High. But in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Ghetto, he really wanted to wrap things up before Yuta learns how to use Rika properly. And that's very interesting because now, after the events of JJK Zero, Yuta is now in a position where his use of Rika is very limited, but his sheer skill with using Rika and taking advantage of her power is amazing. Yuta is a much better sorcerer in general now that he's learned to control Rika, even though his use has limits. And that's a huge factor that a lot of fans and folks will 100% always bring up is Yuta's blaring weakness, that five minute mark. I think this heavily has to do with the old Rika being exercised and now this cursed clone remains basically being Rika's will manifested or maybe it's some kind of self-restrictive binding vow. Whatever the case is, this gives Yuta a limited time to fully manifest Rika and get active. And as we saw in Sendai, Yuta takes full advantage of this and if this really was a true 1v1 with any opponent in Sendai, Kurorushi, Uro, Ryu, they really would not fare well against Yuta and each opponent had to be on alert. The whole Sendai fight was like a battle royale death match and each opponent was ready to take advantage of each other's weaknesses and jump on it because this is a sorcerer's fight. This is sorcerer's fight dirty. There is some honor among them, but really the entire battle, it was like it was like they were fighting over Yuta. Yuta was just at a level just above them in terms of his ability and his power, but Yuta could not just overtake them all at once, especially in a chaotic scene such as this. And that really does say something. Uro and Ryu were incredible and very incredible sorcerers. They just have strength and curse techniques that make them tough, high level opponents. Ryu's cursed energy output is the highest in history. And it's really strange, but I think the output is like the degree for how much cursed energy you can expend at once or even how much damage you do, because naturally the more output you have, the more cursed energy you have, and the more damage you should do. We saw how Ryu's curse technique affected the city of Sendai. And Ryu, he was very tough. He was a very gnarly opponent. He ate shit and he gave it right back over 10 times over. And till right to the battle concluded, he really was throwing hands and even was giving the curse Rika a very tough time. And Uro Takako, she too had a very impressive display and she had a very obscure spatial manipulation technique which was very potent and grants her a lot of dexterity and freedom to move around and fly and manipulate space. Plus she has reverse curse techniques and both opponents had named extension techniques and they had their very own one of a kind domain expansion. They both entered that peak of sorcery. These past sorcerers really were just a different breed and it speaks volumes for how well all of them performed, including Yuta. Yuta was right there with them leading the way. And I really can't confirm it, but the way Yuta was speaking to them at the end of the that little mini arc suggests that Yuta could have killed them if he wanted to. But I think that was just at the end of the battle. It's only speculation as Yuta seemed to have really pushed himself. However, real talk, I can't even process like the Kuro Rushi interaction with Yuta and Kuro, that was crazy. Kuro, he's a bit of a dumb curse, but he was a special grade. He was really strong and a really tough opponent. Even to Uro and Ryu, he was recognized as a pillar in Sendai. However, Yuta in base without Rika wrecked this curse by
by overloading it with positive cursed energy. And to me, this changes my whole outlook on how Yuta even remotely handles cursed spirits. This should no cap 100% work on curses like the calamities like Jogo, Mahito, Dagon, and Hanami because they are all made of negative cursed energy, making it plausible that a fate like this can happen to them if positive cursed energy were to overtake them. That's just how the laws of Jujutsu work. Now this process, even for Yuta, takes a ton of cursed energy to perform and Yuta versus multiple calamities, that really isn't a good look to me. But case by case, I personally would always bet on Yuta due to the sheer amount of moves at his disposal with Rika. However, now we have to dig into Yuta a little bit, going over some contradictions, some negatives, and some weird stuff in the manga. First off, Yuta in base, I guess you call it, without Rika, is quite a bit weaker in comparison to his five minute heightened state, and was just taking some really nasty hits by Ryu and Uro, forcing him to use reverse curse and use his cursed energy and step up his game a bit. However, Yuta, he still had absurdly high cursed energy due to Rika be, still being a factor in that form and he still compensates for not using techniques by actually using cursed tools and he does have decent cursed energy output. He also has some control over Rika in this like half connected shadow state, like some sort of partial manifestation and I should mention Yuta's style of fighting is not like per se ref as refined or as elegant as someone like Maki, Toto, Yuji as they actually learned and have proper taijutsu and martial arts techniques. But Yuta, he just has his own unique flow about him. He can really just incorporate any attack he wants because no matter what he does, his cursed energy reinforces his strikes and he's very unique in that way, very reminiscent to his fellow sorcerer, Hakari. And another point I have to mention, it's kind of a small note, but I gotta mention Chozo. And my boy Chozo, you thought you were safe, but no, my brother. Yuta pulled right up on Chozo and five knuckle shuffled him. That was both brutal and disrespectful. Didn't look at him, didn't give him the time of day, nothing. Right after Chozo's W2, you hate to see it. I know Chozo didn't know about the plan and Yuta was acting, but man, that was a five star performance because he put Chozo straight to sleep. I just had to mention that little note, but even so, Yuta, he's very stacked, but again, his heightened state only is temporary. And that's really just one big negative on Yuta's part, but he does still find smart ways to compensate for it. And he uses his gifts wisely. And now I'd like to address some weird contradictions that Gege left about Yuta and the most kind of iffy one is how the manga said Yuta's cursed energy is boundless and is described as endless, yet in the middle of Yuta's Sendai encounter, there actually seems to be a visible limit to his cursed energy as described by Ryu. Now either A, his cursed energy is just so massive that it just appears to have no end, I imagine like draining a large body of water or something like that. Or B, it it's really only endless when Rika is manifested, which I find the latter to be more favorable because Rika is a big part of his cursed energy storage and seems to be the reason his cursed energy is stated to be boundless. I remember Ghetto said something about that, but that's just a little weird thing I noticed about Yuta and his cursed energy because when Rika is not out, it seems like it's very large, even immeasurable, but apparently it's still finite. He can run out until Riga comes back in and refills it. Now, the next contradiction, which is very strange, is Yuta's condition for copying curse techniques. I see this spread throughout a lot in the community, and I want to kind of address it. But now, Yuta, he does have the curse technique of mimicry, and he's able to mimic any given technique he's come across, albeit friend or foe. Inumaki Clan's Cursed Speech, Daruv's Domain Tracks, and Uro's Sky Manipulation. Those are, th those are the techniques that we've seen from him. In chapter 90, Ken Kenjaku said, In a certain translation, mind you, Yuta can unconditionally copy curse techniques. No condition. That is the big part. That's, a lot That's the part I remember reading way back when. 
and I'm going back, I'm rereading, I'm reading the new official Viz translation and that is gone. The validation of that statement is now in question because now we actually see what the official says. But in chapter 180, Ryu surmised Yuta has some condition to copy curse techniques under some rule like the example of intaking flesh or blood. He had her arm or cursed energy, whatever it was, perhaps. I don't know. It's very weird for how Yuta comes to harness these techniques. And I really do find it hard to imagine Yuta or Rika freaking sucking off Inumaki. I don't know. I, I know how that sounds, but, <laughs> but it's so strange because there's supposedly no condition in some translations, yet the very condition is being shown here anyway. I understand now that there really has to be some drawback with Yuta and Gege likely put the condition here to confirm that, but Yuta's powers represent literally breaking the system and he really stands out even among special grades. His abilities are second to Gojo in unnaturalness, and in the TCB fan scan, it said that in this modern era, he is second only to Gojo Satoru, and fans freaking lose their damn minds about this panel. Down abysmal for Yuta, but if I'm being honest, I kind of believe it too. Yes, sir, I do. It's not Hakari, it's not Megumi, but Yuta is the one who stands strong second in this modern era of Jujutsu Sorcerers. And I know full well, full damn well, what Yuta said about Hakari. And I see Hakari glowing up at this very moment. He's a beast, he's on a roll, his strength is more than vital. But Yuta, even with his drawbacks, is such a better sorcerer in my opinion. And he's really propped up compared to his peers. Of course, I believe folks like Maki, Yuta, Hakari, right now they're all relatively close as of chapter 191. And their portrayal by Gege just makes them seem like all stars. They're the front runners in the calling game arc right now. However, Yuta is just a bit different than the rest. Yuta is a Sugawara, a Fujiwara even. His abilities are second to Gojo. He uses cursed tools. He has nearly every Jujutsu skill in the book. He's got a domain expansion. He mimics techniques. He can obliterate curses with positive energy. He summons a giant Yandere spirit with infinite cursed energy that can throw hands and loses its shit when you try to separate them. I really just sit here and truly just try and fathom why people want to downplay Yuta and act like him being second to Gojo is the craziest thing they've ever heard in the world. It's Yuta's ceiling as a sorcerer. Eventually, of course, Yuta, Hakari, all his peers will supposedly reach or surpass Gojo's level one day, but I feel Yuta is a lot closer than the rest because of how blessed he is as a sorcerer. And if those five minutes are just too much of a drawback, fine. You do you, I can give you that. But downplaying Yuta is so whack. Yuta is incredibly versatile and out of everyone in the series, he's one of the few characters and individuals that have just has so many damn options when fighting. It's actually a meme. And there are just still some unknowns about the extent of Rika and what she can do. And he does get overhyped. He does get wanked at times. And But what do you expect? He is the prodigy and everyone's trying to look for the next big thing now that Gojo has left the scene and left this huge vacuum of power in the series with him gone and sealed. I also understand Yuta's position in the series and it just feels like he is the hot topic even among the manga characters. Gojo hyped him up talking to Kenjaku hinting that he'd suffer the same fate as Ghetto and Kenjaku himself really doubts and downplays Yuta a bit stating that he cannot be the next Satoru Gojo. Even with this claim, there's still some acknowledgement. Yuji even thinks that Yuta could be the one to handle Sukuna if it gets to that point. Yuji himself thinks Yuta can do that. So with Gege with the way he writes, name drops, and even praises Yuta, it just kind of props Yuta up a bit. And in even the context with the actual story, and especially with us fans as well, we just get hyped for Yuta. But I like talking about this, and I especially like how the scene in Jujutsu Kaisen right now and how competitive the community is at the moment about these new faces like Akari, Kashimo, Maki, and Yuta. 
there's just something refreshing about all these new faces of power and it's really sparked a lot of debate and agitation in fans so i want to kind of steadily give my own viewpoints and start expressing my own opinions about certain characters and certain matchups and let me know if y'all want to start seeing more of that it is really fun today i just wanted to express my own thoughts on yuda and how i felt about him i really really hope you guys liked it but please express your own thoughts and everything i like reading y'all brothers expressions and remember to like and sub for more but this has been any stand user and i'll see y'all in the next one bye bye